not just a little bit of God, but all of God. Amen. I know in my life sometimes it's like I take just a little bit enough to get me over that hump. What if I took it all? How would my life be changed? Your life could be changed this morning. Just come and accept all that he has for you and let somebody pray with you this morning. God, we praise you.
hug, a high five, a handshake, and here's what's happening at the house. Like, mmm, spiritual chest bump, mmm, my bad. Hope y'all didn't see that. Whoa, let's get over just a little bit right here, Miss Harley. What's up, house family? Woo, man, was worship not off the chain? Dang, man, it was thick. Almost had a Holy Ghost runaway. <laughs> you'll stay here long enough, you'll see that probably. Anyway, some of you were wondering, hey, what's, who are these people here? These are our 240 interns, and we want to honor them because, uh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. We got to talk about them first. See, these people just want to celebrate you guys. <laughs> But I'm so proud of Pastor Haley Haynes. She's our children's pastor right here. And just her heart for the next generation. And uh, our heart as a church is for the next generation. Amen. That, that we believe that our kids are the church of today and not tomorrow. Can I get an amen? That they are the leaders of today. And when Pastor Haley came, she said, hey, this summer, not only do I want to do three VBS summer blasts, I want to do a summer internship. I said, are you sure? Really? She said, Yeah. I was like, all right, man, can I be part of it? She said, yes, you can, Pastor B. So she started an internship. I've been so proud of her. And these are her interns. So I want to go ahead and turn it over because I love her to share a little bit about what they did. Oh, hey, we got to watch a slideshow real quick. Check them out. All the, yeah, check them out. I'm not striving in my own sin, I'm striving in yours. I'm not trying to find my own way, I'm walking that course. I'm not thinking about my own plans, I'm thinking about yours. With you, my steps are safe, you motion me for, yeah. And now I'm moving in a different place. It was a lot of fun. Um, these kids have impressed me so much this summer. When I um, felt like the Lord wanted me to start this internship, there were a lot of things that I wanted to happen. And some of those were that I wanted them to grow, not only in their love for the Lord and their hunger for the word, but also as leaders. Amen. I wanted them to learn how to serve. And I feel like that was accomplished. Um, they have come out of their shells and out of their comfort zones so much this summer, and they didn't always love it but they did it anyway um, without complaining most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> um, but seriously, I'm so proud of them. We got to start every day in the Word, um, 45 minutes in the Word to be exact, and then they got to hear from some of our amazing leaders, and they got to learn a lot. And I just, I'm so proud of each and every one of you. It's awkward because they're behind me. Um, and I believe in you guys truly so much. And they're all nervous right now because they keep thinking that I'm going to make them talk. And I told them I was going to this service, but I won't because I don't know if they would even do it if I handed them the mic. But um, for real, I'm so proud of you guys. 
honored that I got to hang out with you all summer. And parents, too, thank you for letting yeah. me get to spend time with them all summer and bringing them really early to the church twice a week. Um, but we have something for you guys, something that we want to give you, a Bible, um, just as a little thank you for the summer. This That's isn't Harley. even yours. I forgot their names are on it. Harley. 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 <laughs> Justice. All right, this is Justice. And we're actually missing... Justin, but we can still honor him oh, in spirit Matt, today. Matt Rude. Um, Matt. Ooh, Matt. Ian! Ian. Doesn't it sound like a basco? Ian Harry! No, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Chloe. 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 There you go. And, and then, then the Mason. one and only Mason. Mason. Hey, awesome. come on, give it up for these guys. Awesome. They awesome. <laughs> well, that's all. That's yeah. all for me. By the way, Hey, we did beat them in bowling, didn't we, fellas? Yeah, we just smoked y'all the other day, just so you'll know. Okay, y'all, y'all go ahead. Give it up for Blacia and Mariah as they give us what's happening at the house. Morning. Good morning, guys. Um, they really did do amazing. I helped with the little summer blast that was like last week or something, and they did so good. We didn't even need to be there, honestly, because they did everything for us. The second day especially, because we were really hot and tired, and it was early, and they still had energy because <laughs> they're young, and so they took pretty much charge, and they did awesome, so they really are great. Go All ahead. right, I just want to say good morning. My name's Mariah. This is Blasha. We just want to say welcome. And if you're new today, we want to say you may be new today, but tomorrow we consider you family. Yep. Okay, but if you are new, there is a Connect card in the seat back in front of you. Fill that out. Take it out to the VIP booth, and we just have a gift to say thank you for being here. All right. Speaking of Summer Blast, we have another one coming up um, August 4th through the 6th. It's ages 6 to 12. Make sure you sign up your kids so that they can go ahead and get a t-shirt. Also, we still need volunteers for the VBS. If you love to be around kids, if you have a lot of energy and you want to help out with that, go sign up. Yep. Um, now it is, oh, I forgot. Family group Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, but anyway, so <laughs> next is we have family group leaders. If you want to be a family group leader, which we is amazing. You guys don't understand. Like she's a family group leader, and I've seen how she's grown in her faith just because you get to be that leader. Get Being that leadership. Being the leader, you just you get to feed into others, but you get fed into yes. fed into more than you expect. Yes. You get fed in more than you. I feel like I get fed more than I actually get to feed my women that are in my group. Yeah. Yep. But um, if you want to be a family leader or a family group leader, then or if you already are one, we need you to sign up again and do that on the app, and we need to do it pretty quick. So go yep. home, pray about it, and let God lead you to do it, and it'll be great. It will. All right, we also have a financial workshop coming up. The date is moved to next Sunday. Um, it is August 1st. It is right after church, and it'll be until 3 p.m., right? Right. Okay. <laughs> Till 3 p.m. Um, it is only $10, and that's just so we can cover your lunch. But while we're talking about the financial workshop, I just want to bring up CJ and Tanantha just to tell you what their story is and how much it helped them. Hey guys, I'm Tanantha. I'm the talker, so my husband's just going to stand here and look good. His name's CJ. So we, it's a lot easier this time, by the way. <laughs> we started, uh, got together in 2016. We started going to church here in 2018. Um, we had maybe $1,000. You did that to me last time, too. Maybe $1,000 every two weeks between the both of us. So we were always paying the what bills are we going to pay? What bills are we going to put off? Um, you know, which bill collectors will allow us to pay half now and half later? That was always a game we played. We didn't have a savings. We didn't have anything. We didn't know what any of that was. We fought like crazy all the time, all the time. Um, we got married in 2019, and we reached out, and we said, we need help. We can't do this alone. We can't. There's no way we can do this alone. We have to have somebody in our corner. And we reached out, and we got connected with the Roots, and we started that I was broke, but now I'm not, their financial class. One of the very first things we learned is that our money is not ours. It's God's. So we needed to quit saying, you pay your bills with your money. I'll pay my bills with my money. We needed to realize it was God's money. So we started tithing. We were just tithing $20 here, $30 there if we could afford it. If we couldn't afford it, we didn't pay, okay? We got better jobs, started doing a little bit better, got in that class, learned what everything was, and the very first thing we did whenever we walked in their house is we prayed with them. They prayed with us, and I just broke down because I never realized that somebody else was in my corner with my finances other than my husband. 
And it was so nice knowing. And then they let us know, hey, it's not just us. We have God. You have God on your side. God's always with you. Give it to God. So we gave it to God and we prayed and we learned about, you know, investments. We learned about what we, where we needed to put our money, what we needed to do with our money. And at the end of the day, we were like excited to do it, but we didn't know how. So we got with our really good friends, the Evans. They got with us and they showed us how to put our money into what we were learning in that class. We, they showed us what to do with our money, where we could be better stewards of our money through God. So we allowed them to help us. We went through our class and everything. Our, our two-year goal was to get a bigger vehicle for me so that our family could fit in it because we were taking two different vehicles. And our five-year goal was to eventually build a house and have a forever home for our children. We are two years in. We will hopefully have our forever home within the year. And I have a vehicle. We have a savings. Um, we are fixing to sit down and start talking about investments, things that I never even knew what those words were. So guys, I'm telling y'all, if you do not know it, what to do with your finances, don't stress, don't cry, don't worry, don't fight with your husband, it's not worth it. Ask for help. This changed our lives. It completely changed our lives. Our marriage is stronger now because we're not worrying about money. We united as a one, it's our money now and it's God's money. It's not yours and it's not mine. So it, it's changed us, we're a lot happier, a lot happier, our kids are happier and we have the freedom to be able to say, you know what? Let's go to the water park today with our kids. Let's do this with our kids. Instead of looking at our kids and saying, we can't afford that. Because that's what hurt the worst is knowing that we couldn't do that because we were not following God's word with our money and we didn't know where our money was going. So we're a lot better today and we're a lot happier because, and we owe it all to the financial program in this church. <laughs> so. Amen. All right. Let's watch this. Such a good testimony. That's awesome. So if y'all struggle, or even if you don't, and you just want to learn more about how God wants you to use your money, sign up for that workshop. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't think that there's anybody in here that wouldn't want to have that success yeah. story. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So next, I'm going to kind of tell you what to do next week, okay? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guide bossy. you. We're kind of being bossy. Not really, but I'm saying it with a smile, so it's okay. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> So next week is week, we talk about it all the time, but this is why we're, that's why we're being bosses. Next week is week one of foundations class and growth track. So foundations class is you taking your next step in your faith. If you want to learn more, getting the basics, just learning from day one. Even if you've been in it for 20 years, it's nice to go back to that the basics and, yes. and even being in it for even if you've been a christian for a long time you are going to learn something new yep. and you are going to grow deeper yeah I promise. absolutely so if that's what you want to do then go to the nine o'clock service or go to the nine o'clock at that the foundations class is at nine o'clock in the kids building and then come to the second service then go to the foundations class next week but or the financial financial too many f you're going to have a long anyway, day, but so it's So if great. you want to do the growth track, um, which is if you want to serve in the church, if you want to um, hang out with the kids, or if you want to just learn about the church, the mission and the vision and what we believe in and where our hearts at are like as a church, then you're going to come to the 9 o'clock service, and then this 11 o'clock service is when the growth track is in the kids' building. So if you want to do the growth track, come to 9 o'clock. Go over there to the 11 o'clock growth track and then go to the financial, financial class after. at 1. Okay, so next week, just plan to be here all day. All day. And all you have all to do is bring $10. <laughs> okay, can y'all guess what time it is? It's time for tithe and offering. Woo! Okay, I just want to read a quick quote for you. It says, life with God is not immunity from difficulties, but peace in difficulties. So you're not going to be immune from hard times. It doesn't matter if you're talking about finances or just life in general or your kids. It doesn't matter. You're not going to be immune to it. But you will have peace in it if you truly give it to God and let God take care of that and show you what you need to do in that time. Yeah. All right. There are three ways to give. If you're giving with cash, put it in the envelope in the seat back in front of you and take it to the... Uh, Mailboxes in the back, I went blank on what they were called. <laughs> and then if you're given with a check, just write the check to the house, PB, and then put it back there in the mailboxes. Or you can download the app and put give on the app. That way, as soon as you get paid, you're able to do that, and you're, you're able to truly give your first 10 and set that aside. If you do that with cash, that's awesome. But for me, it's easier to have the app and just click the heart and do it as soon as I deposit my check. All right. I'm going to pray over the gifts and just get ready to go on a three-minute break and get the service started. 
Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for everything you are doing in this church, Lord. Thank you for the way the worship was and the way it moved everybody, Lord. I pray that you just bless the givers that are giving today and bless the gifts to be able to use them tenfold for your kingdom, not for anything else but for you. You determine where our money goes, and I am so thankful for that, Lord. I pray that you just... Be with Pastor Brandon as he's preaching today, Lord, and just let his sermon truly speak to every single person here, Lord. You give Brandon the words to say so that it touches every single person and it's what they need to hear, Lord. I just thank you for everything you do for this church and everything you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to take a three-minute break. Go get some coffee and a donut. What's up, family again? Everybody having a good day? Oh, it is so great uh, to see everybody on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, well, welcome to week two of our series, You Asked For. And again, the series is based off uh, a survey that we gave out in Easter. And uh, we, we asked you guys some questions. And, and you guys, so the question was, you know, I would like to hear some messages on what the Bible has to say about 
what? And I was really surprised because there were literally hundreds of responses from you guys that came in. And what we did is we compiled all the responses together and we came up with the five top, the five top topics that you wanted to hear about. And last week we took a look, we took a look at anybody remember? Wow. Yeah. Two people. It's all right. You slept since then. I give you, I give you an out. It's all good. So yeah, we took a look at hope. And, and it's not surprising because it seems like the world we live in is just so full of doom and gloom. You know, and what we learn is that hope is not a question mark. Because a lot of time life throws questions at us and, and it gives us all these doubts and all these thoughts. And eventually you get to the, what's the point? Why even try anymore? But what we learned is that hope isn't a question mark. Hope is what? It's an exclamation mark. Come on, anybody an exclamation mark this week? Bro, I was. Girl, I, I mean, I was all that. Ask Callie. Everybody ask me, how you doing, Pastor B? I'm an exclamation mark. <laughs> and it says that God is for me and not against me. Amen. Right? That's what hope says, that my tomorrow will be better than my today because my God has gone before me. And that's what hope is about. And today, uh, the second topic that we're going to talk about that you guys requested. You ready? It's on forgiveness. Yay. <laughs> it's on forgiveness. And I know today is a really tough topic, but I want to invite you to come back next week because it's even going to be an awesome topic. And I've been so amazed at how the Holy Spirit has been putting this series together because next week we're going to talk about miracles. And that that was the third request. What about miracles? What does the Bible have to say? Do they still happen? And I'm telling you that is because we actually want you to invite somebody to church that has a illness or something. We're actually going to have a healing service. Matter of fact, uh, thank you for that. Uh, our prayer team right now, we're, we're praying all week and we're fasting and we're just believing because again, the Bible instructs us. It says, if anybody is sick, what does it say to do? You're supposed to bring them to the front, have the elders lay hands on them, anoint them with oil and pray for God to heal them. And that's just what we're doing. We're just totally being biblical, and that's what we, we believe in healing here. And not just, many people think in miracles, they think of, of just physical healing, but there's all kinds of healing. There's spiritual healing. There's mental healing. There's emotional healing. So again, make sure that you invite somebody because we're just going to give the Holy Spirit an opportunity, what? To heal people. To heal people. So again, but when it comes to forgiveness today, it's a tough topic. But it's something that we need to talk about because the reality is, we really need to talk about it every day, maybe every week, because there are moments all through our week that give people opportunities to what? To hurt us, to injure us. Like, like, like it's just there's every opportunity to come that way. And I think there's a reason why the Bible explained this. Do you know in Matthew, it talks about in the last days. And I believe we're in the last days. I believe we're, or we're in the beginning stages of it. But this is what it says in Matthew when it comes to offenses and forgiveness. In Matthew 24, it says, and many will be what? Will be offended. That word many, when you study out in the Greek, it really means the majority. So what you can say is the majority of people, again, this is Jesus talking to a bunch of Christians. The majority of people are going to be offended. Like it's, like, it's like, it's almost, you're telling me like, really, if I don't really have a choice, no, you're going to be offended. I mean, is anybody offended now? I mean, you can't do anything. You can't say anything without being offended today. And if you're a number two, like me in the Enneagram, you get offended a lot. <laughs> I mean, you can't live in a world today and not be offended. Oh my gosh. What about Facebook? Whoa, and I just want to tell some people, I've never in my life have I seen so many people who claim to know God's word misrepresent God's word. I just want to tell you to everybody who underneath me, listen, if you're reading something on Facebook, it might sound spiritual, but it might not be spiritual. And if it doesn't line up with God's word, don't listen to it. Don't even give it any amount of time of your day. It's Satan trying to get you into a debate. He's trying to get you into something. But that's why you need to know God's word. And I tell you, don't just take my word for it. Everything, I want you to open up God's word and read it for yourself. Okay? But again, we live in a world that we're going to be fit. Matter of fact, in Luke, it says this. It says, it's impossible that no offenses should come. What? Really? Like, like, so in other words, you're telling me, if you're trying to live your life without offenses, good luck. 
because they're going to come. Jesus telling us, you can't live this world and not be offended and things not come your way. Listen, you might not be able to control the offenses coming your way, but you know what we can do? We can't control how we respond to them. And that's what we're talking about is what am I supposed to do when people hurt me, when they wrong me, when they betray me, when they let me down? Because Jesus tells us, what are we supposed to do? Forgive. And it's so easy to talk about, but it's so hard to do. But we have to do it because the truth is you might not be able to control offense coming your way. You might be able to control a little bit how you respond to it. But you know what me and you, what we do not have the option of? We do not have the option of is whether or not we choose to forgive or not. As a Christ follower, you don't have a choice. Jesus tells us what? To forgive. Listen, in Matthew 6, 14, again, Jesus is talking to this same crowd of people about offenses. He says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, again, the first time I read this, fear rose up in me. It, like, it stopped me in my tracks. And even today, it still stops me in my tracks. Because I want to be honest with you, growing up, I had a lot of pain in my life. I had a lot of hurt in my life. Although I had the most amazing family in the world, I was abused by some babysitters, physically, verbally. I was abused by babysitters before it took my innocence was stolen. It's like, it's like I've been hurt by coaches growing up. The very coaches that are supposed to encourage you and help you go on and be everything were the ones that would often say, I need to tear you down to build you up. I have no idea how that makes sense to any coach if you're in here. I've coached, and I never tore down a kid from that time. You can build a kid up to get the most out of them. Can I get an amen? How about you speak into them, not tear them down? But they often made me question my self-worth based off whether or not I won or lost a game. I got hurt by the church growing up. Many times I would go to church, and I would try, but they cared more about my behavior than my hurt, than my heart. They cared more where you're going by the rules. They didn't care why I was hurting, what was going on. And even at an early age, I got saved at 22. I'm 41. Even leading up to last week, I still have some people that hurt me, and I still have some pain. But the reason why fear came up inside of me, because I want to be honest with you, I don't want to forgive. There's times I don't want to forgive the people who hurt me. And it brought fear into me because Jesus says, you don't have a choice. If I'm a Christ follower and I've surrendered my life to Jesus, I don't have a choice. I don't want to let people go who have hurt me. I don't want to do it. And I understand it. And I tell you, I think the reason why it's a problem for Jesus, because understand this, forgiveness is a hard issue. It's a hard issue. And if you don't forgive, it leads to bitterness in your life. And bitterness will steal your soul. It'll rob your joy. It'll keep you from living the life that God has called to you. I promise you, I've been there. I've been there as a Christian. I've been there even as a pastor. This is an area that I'm still growing in. Listen to what Ann Lehman says. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. I've also heard it this way. Unforgiveness is like setting yourself on fire but expecting the other person to die of smoke inhalation. Again, forgiveness is about your heart. And that's why it's such a big deal. And I think for the most part, really, I think most Christians do want to forgive. I think deep down in the side of me, I really do want to forgive. But to be honest, I don't know how sometimes. I, I don't know how to get over my, my emotions. I don't know how to get over my, my defenses that come my way at times. And I think for a lot of us as well, many people don't forgive because we have a wrong understanding of forgiveness. It's like we don't truly, we can't define forgiveness, so we just don't do forgiveness. And I want to help some people today, I hope, just like in my life, I want to help, hope give you a fresh revelation because I truly believe that God wants to set you free today. 
You know the only prerequisite for a miracle to happen in your life? Make sure you don't have any unforgiveness in your heart. Isn't it awesome how we're talking about forgiveness, so it's going to set you up for a miracle next week? Word. You know that? So what do we do? I think it's we just don't know it. I want to give you some things right here. First of all, forgiveness is not minimizing what happened to you. It doesn't minimize the seriousness of it. It's not like, you know, what happened to you is no big deal. No, it's a big deal. It happened. God knows it. God cares about it. And it's not like God goes to your fence and says, well, I know you were offended. Get over it, brother. He just, he doesn't do that. He doesn't play it off like it's not a big deal. So understand forgiveness is not minimizing the seriousness that has happened to you. It cracks me up all the time whenever I hear a, a Christian who, who is not, doesn't have any offense in their life right now. Things are going good and they're trying to minister to somebody about offense and says, well, you just need to get over it. God doesn't even say it in that way. We need to quit saying it that way. Because listen, no matter how big an offense is or isn't to other people, what matters is you were offended. Is you have hurt in your heart. And it was real. And that's all that matters. So understand that God, forgiveness is not minimizing what happens to you. The second thing up there, hey, go on the next one, please. The next thing, it's not reconciliation. It's not. We don't, I think a lot of people think, well, Pastor B, if, if I forgive, then, then I have to be back in that relationship with him. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Well, Pastor B, you're telling me I need to get back in that friendship who hurt me again and again and betrayed me. No, I'm not telling you that. Pastor B, I need to forgive them, so I I need to go back. You're telling me I need to go back to that marriage who was unfaithful. No, I'm not telling you that. You know what, Pastor B, you're telling me that I need to get back in that marriage that they abused me. No, I'm not telling you that. Pastor B, if I forgive, then I need to get back in that relationship that hurt me. Pastor B, I need to get back in that business relationship that hurt me. I'm not telling you any of that. Listen, write this down. Take it to the bank. Forgiveness is not reconciliation. It's not. Now, I believe that reconciliation is important. There are some relationships that need to be reconciled. There are many marriages that need to be reconciled. There are. But that's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is about one. Reconciliation is about two. Forgiveness is about your heart. Reconciliation is about what happens with somebody else. Forgiveness is about the condition of your heart, not the condition of your relationship with somebody else. Okay, understand that. I hear people all the time that we, we misuse this because we, do, we don't understand it. Well, you're, well if, I, if I forgive them and let them go, then I need to put myself back in that pain. I'm not telling you this, and I'm telling you. In some relationships, if the other party's not ready to reconcile, I don't think you should go reconcile because you're going to be hurt all the more. It's a two-party deal, not one. So understand forgiveness is about the heart. It's about the condition. Forgiveness is about the relation, your relationship with Jesus. So I hear people all the time say, well, Pastor B, you know what? When they come to me and they ask for my forgiveness, then I'll forgive them. No. Don't do that either. That's called bondage. You're waiting on somebody to come to ask, to ask for your forgiveness when they don't even know they offended you. Like I said, they're, on, they're at the lake chilling, skiing, and you're up at night eating ice cream. You know, but I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. No, you're in bondage. I used to think this too growing up. I used to think, man, when I, especially as I got real spiritual with the Lord, you know what? If I forgive somebody, I'm doing them a favor. I, I'm doing my gut. You know what? I'm helping them out. I set them free. No, what I've learned is I was the one who was set free. Forgiveness is about the condition of your own heart. It has nothing to do with the other person. It's also not this. I think the reason why we don't forgive because we think, well, you're telling me I need to forget it. No, that's not, it's not it either. One, I think that's an unrealistic expectation. It is an unrealistic expectation to forget the pain. Why? Because the way God created you to be. Your mind. Anybody remember the good stuff that happens in your life? Don't you wish we could forget some of the bad stuff in our life? But the reason why we can't is because Satan, is because of our flesh. He will use it to bring it up again and again and again. It's not forgetting what happened to you. You know, Joyce Meyer, everybody know who Joyce Meyer is? 
You know, she, she talks about this a little bit. I think she's a powerful woman of God. I love it when she preaches. But she talked about how she was molested by her father over 200 times. 200 times. And she'll, in, this, in her own words, I don't remember more or less. I remember every time. And as she grew in her relationship, her father never, ever asked for forgiveness, never came and make amends. So as she grew and she got saved and she continued to live her life, she knew that God wanted her to forgive. So what did she do? She went and built the house for her mother and father. Still, her dad did not come and ask for forgiveness and try to make things right. It was years later that he finally come to her and say, listen, I'm sorry. I wasn't man enough to come and tell you that I was sorry. And guess what Joyce Meyer did? She led her daddy to the Lord, baptized him the next week, and then he died the following week. Now, this is the most amazing. I can't believe she even said it. She said, when it comes to the miracle that took place, it's almost like I'm okay that that happened to me. The memory, the, again, what I'm telling you, forgiveness is not forgetting what happened to you. But what I am offering you today is a God that says, listen, I can help you to that memory does no longer have to define your life. It doesn't have to keep you from living the life that God has called you to live because right now there's some unforgiveness, something in you that is keeping you, that is holding you bondage. Well, man, I'll forgive the hurt. But I can't forget. That's right. Another reason why we don't, because we don't think it's fair. You're, you know what? I don't think it's not fair that you hurt me. You don't know the pain that you caused me. You don't know the suffering that you caused me. It's not fair now, God. You want me to forgive them? You want me to just give them a free pass so they can go on and live their life and live happily ever after? I'm not going to do it. It's not fair. Well, hey, let's. Let's not go the fair route. And I tell you, I tell you the day God dealt with me on the fair route. He said, Brandon, you want to talk about being fair? Let's talk about you. Remember when you didn't want to have anything to do with me? Remember when you rejected me? You know, Brandon, remember that time in college as your freshman year that you looked up and you told me that, that I wasn't real? And you rebelled against me and you started drinking and partying and living the college life and being with all kinds of women and treating people horrible? You remember that? Well, hey, listen, while you were at your worst, Brandon, I still went to the cross and died for you. Let's not talk about fair because if I was fair, I would let you pay for your own sins. See, you can't, don't, let's not go the fair route. But I understand if you're there, if you say, I don't want to forgive because it's just not fair what they did to me. Do you know Peter was the same way? Peter had all kinds of issues. And he had, there, were, there was this one dude who was hurting him all the time. And he comes up to Jesus in Matthew 18. And he says, then Peter came to Jesus and says, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. In one translation, it says 70 times 7 or 490. And if you go to Luke, I think I read it one time that it said, you might have to do it 490 times a day. That's a lot. That means it's not a one-time thing. You might have to do it over and over and over and over again because understand this, forgiveness is a choice and not a feeling. And then he goes on and he says this. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Now, I want to I paraphrase the next verses, verses 24 through 34. And if you read it, this is what you're going to find out. That there was a servant who owed his master over 10,000 bags of gold. That's equivalent to date over $5 billion. $5 billion. Now, there ain't nobody could pay that back. And there's Jesus telling, telling the story, this parable. All right, so what did he do? The, the man falls at the master's feet and begs, listen, there, you know there's no way that I can do it. And you know what the master did? He forgave him. He forgave him of every single debt, every penny, everything. And you would think that guy would have got up and lived his life different. 
but he didn't because he went out and he found another servant who owed him money. The Bible says like a hundred denarii, okay? Found him and choked him. <laughs> choked him till he paid him what he owed. And when the master found out about it, he went and got that dude, brought it back and said, you wicked servant. I forgave you of all of this debt, of everything. And then now you're going to go off and you're going to treat people that way? You know what? I'm going to hand you over to the guard and I'm going to let them torture you till now you have to pay me back. Five billion dollars. That's a lot of torturing. Now we're going to pick up in verse 35 because this is how Jesus ends. In verse 35, he says, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Ouch. Jesus says, listen, if you not forgive man, your heavenly father won't forgive you. And then Jesus goes on, wait up. I thought God was just all care bears. Care bear stare. Nobody watch Care Bears? <laughs> Strawberry shortcake? None of that? Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, God's just all warm fuzzies. He says he's going to open up a can on some people. And I wish it wasn't in the area of forgiveness. Offenses are going to come our way. We don't have an option whether or not we forgive. And I'm going to tell you what, every one of us have been forgiven of an inexcusable debt that we'll never be able to pay, every single one of us in this place. And if you can't forgive, there is a good chance you have never received the forgiveness of your heavenly father. I know that's hard to say, because like I said, this area I struggle with. But if you can't really forgive, there's a chance you never have truly received, or I'll tell you this, or you've probably forgotten. You've probably forgotten about how big your sin was. You've probably forgotten that every single one of us came to Jesus on our knees. It doesn't matter if you were born in a bar or if you were born in a church, the exact sound of amount of grace took for both people to make it into heaven. Every single one of us. Every one of us, we have no reason to hold and keep unforgiveness in our heart. And we forget it. Ephesians 2.12 says this, remember. Why does they say remember? Because they know as human beings, we have a tendency to what? Forget. We forget how bad we were. Matter of fact, we weren't bad. You were dead. D-E-D, -E -D, dead. Rachel's like, that's not how you spell dead, Pastor Pete. But you were dead. And he says that at the time that you were separate from Christ, without hope and without God in a world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Jesus. Like because of Jesus, not because of you're great, not because of I'm great, because of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, dividing the wall of hostility. What that means, Jesus took away the wall. There's nothing now that is keeping us from freely offering people forgiveness. Thanks, Jesus. C.S. Lewis says this, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in me. Every single one of us. Man, this is a tough topic, I know. Another reason I don't think we forgive is because we just don't think we can do it. We just don't think we can do it. But listen, I get it. You're right. In your own strength, you can't do it. You can't do it. But how many of you know that you're never supposed to measure your ability based off what you can and can't do? We only measure by what God can do inside of us. See, it's not what you can do because you can't. You're not strong enough. You don't have the ability because your flesh wants to what? I'm going to put a bow on your head. And listen, there's an enemy of your soul right now that is even telling you today what happened to you is so big, there's no way you'll be able to get over it. 
He's lying to you. And you're right. Outside of God's help, you can't do this. So how do I do it then, Pastor B? You do it with the help of Jesus. You have to be attached to the source of where it comes, which is Jesus Christ. It can happen. Philippians 4.13 says what? I can do all things, everything. I can do everything, not some things. It means that I can forgive. It can happen no matter what has happened to me with the help of Jesus. Listen to Hebrews 12 too. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Right? It's Jesus. It's him. For the joy set before him endured the cross. Who was it? Who was it? Jesus said, I was able to endure the cross because of you. I thought of you. And then he goes on, he says, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then, listen to the message translation, Hebrews 2, 17 says, that's why he had to enter into every detail of human life. Then when he came before God as high priest to get rid of the people's sins, he would have already experienced it all himself, all the pain, all the testing, and would be able to help where help was needed. Again, Jesus Christ, everything he went through on this earth, he went through exactly what you went through. There's not a pain, there's not a betrayal, there's not a hurt. There's not one thing that you have gone through in this world that Jesus hasn't gone through. Then Jesus says, and listen, man, I bore it all on the cross. You don't have to live with this anymore. Give me your pain, give me your suffering, blood it at the feet of the cross, and then go on and live the life that I've called you to live. It's, it's his help. He is our help in time of need. And when it comes to this area, we need help. I need help. First Peter then goes on and says, since Christ suffered while he was in his body, strengthen yourself with the same way of thinking that Christ had. Well, what was his way of thinking? Because I just, again, I'm going to tell you, forgiveness is a choice. Jesus made a choice. You all know the story of the cross. Thursday night, Jesus is hanging out with his friends, just eating, chilling. One of them betrays him. Judas betrays him, hands him over. And then they go that night to, be try, to try Jesus. Do you know it was an illegal trial? Because according to Jewish and even Roman law, you're not supposed to do trials at nighttime. Jesus was illegally tried that night. And then at 9 a.m., he was handed over to be beaten, whipped, and flogged and all that stuff. And then at 9 a.m., they put him on a cross. They nailed his hands there. They put a crown of thorns on him. They dug him. They mocked him. They beat him. And you know the first word out of his mouth? You know what he says in Luke? Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. See, to me, it's not the fact that Jesus said it. It's the fact that it was the first thing that came out of his mouth. Father, forgive them. Man, how do I forgive them? How do I forgive them? They've, done, they, they've hurt me so bad. They did the inexcusable offense to me. Jesus is saying, hey, I, I get it. Me too. All I did was love people and help people. And they put me on a cross. And I still said, Father, forgive them. We can't do this in our own ability. We need the help of Jesus. So what do we do then, Pastor? How do, I, how do I get through this? I want to forgive. Again, I understand it's not all these things that, that are going on, but what do I do? Well, one, I just want you to know we're about to get into it. The things we're talking about, I'm going to tell you, they're counterculture. They're totally against what this culture says to do. And the second thing I want to tell you, you're not going to want to do them. You're not going to want to do it when people hurt you. And I've been there, and I get it, but I understand. This is what Jesus says. We don't have a choice. You know what, we're really, what I'm really talking about, these three things? What he's really looking for is obedience. Everybody say obedience. Obedience. Why do we need law? Why do we need rules? Why do we need things like Jesus tells us you don't really have a choice? Because we don't want to do it. So he tells you, I don't care if you don't want to do it. you got to do it. And it's hard. And remember, it's not any of that stuff we're talking about, but you're not going to want to do these. But I promise you, you all write this down if you want to. 
True freedom and forgiveness comes from people who are obedient to the Lord. Amen. The more you'll study Scripture, the more you'll learn it's about obedience. The reason why I'm not going to drink and get drunk and party, and the reason why I'm going to follow his commands, why? Because I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. He tells me to do it. And because of that, I'm going to be blessed for it. I'm amazed when somebody, one of my friends or somebody in my life, they know they're not supposed to be doing something, but they do it anyway, and then they come to me and say, why is God doing this to me? Do you want me to really answer that? Because I bet you know it. But we don't want to forgive. So you already write this stuff down? Because this is about obedience. The first thing when it comes to my offense, how do I do this? One, I'm supposed to pray for them. Uh, really? Pray for them? I'll pray for them. I'll pray for the house to fall on them. Pray for a plague to fall on their family. I'll pray for them. Really? You want me to pray for them? Yeah. Look at what he says in Matthew 5, 43. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. See, that's the world's way. Hate people who wrong you. You know what? Hate them. Hate them. But then he goes on and says, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. No. I don't want to, God. I know you don't want to, but I'm asking you to do it. Listen, this is where it really started for me in this area of my life, man. Is once you get to the point that you can begin to pray for them, your heart will begin to change. And it might, it might start out bad. God, I know that they're, they're horrible people. Lord, you know what they did. They deserve to die. <laughs> but God... I remember that time you forgave me of that. And Lord, I remember that time I rejected you. And Lord, thank you for forgiving me. And then all of a sudden, your heart begins to change. Let me tell you what I've learned in my life. I don't know if this is biblical. I'm telling you what happened to me. You can't pray for somebody and hate somebody at the same time. It's impossible. And that's why I didn't want to pray for them, because I don't really want to like them. Sorry. I loved being offended. It gave me a reason. It justified me being mean to them. It justified me not saying hi to them. Give me a reason to think that way about them. He says, pray for them. And then he goes on, if the band will go ahead and come, and then he goes on and says this. Bless them. What? You want me to pray for them. Now you want me to bless them. That word blessing means words. It means that, that to speak well of them. What? You want me to pray for them. Now you want me to bless them. You want me to speak well of them, God? Really? No, no, Lord. I'll forgive them of the pain. I'll forgive them of what they did for me. I'll pray for them. But you know what? I'm not going to speak well of them. Man, you know how freeing? You know how freeing it could be in your life and how freeing it is? If, if that offense that you have and you're around somebody who's talking about it, but you remember whenever you're first offended, everybody you're around, what do you do? You talk about it. And then as you're starting to get over it, Everybody else just thinks because that's all you ever just talk about it. Well, they continue to talk about it. <laughs> so what you're doing, you're finally starting to get over it. And then somebody starts talking about the issue. And then it brings up all this pain and all this stuff again. You know how freeing it would be to say, you know what? Yeah, you're, you're right. But I know, I know if they had to do it again, they probably wouldn't do that. You know, I, I know what they did hurt me, but I, I, believe, I believe they love God. And have you seen them lately? They're serving God. And they're trying to make amends, and they're trying to do things right. And you know what? You know that I like you when I don't like you, but I still say good stuff about you. 
know how freeing it could be? I've made it to the first two. I've been able to pray for people and I've been able to bless people. And I gotta read the bless part to you because I almost forgot. Because I don't want you to go off of what I say. We're supposed to do what his word says. Then Luke says, but I tell you, who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless, everybody say bless. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. And then Romans goes on and says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Listen, I know these are hard. God is saying, I know you don't want to forgive. I know you don't feel like it. I'm not asking you to feel like it. I'm just asking you to do it. Just asking you to do this stuff. I want you to pray for them. I want you to bless them. And then the third thing, I don't like that he put it in the Bible. But I got to put it. And I got to tell you, but now I'm liable to do it myself. We're supposed to do good to them. What, God? Pray for them. Bless them. Now you want me to be nice? No. I don't want to. They're mean. They lied. They hurt me. I get it. I'm right there with you. But so is Jesus. And he understands. He says, do good to him. Be nice to him. Romans 12, 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for the wrath of God. See, what God is telling us here is that, you know what, if you'll quit trying to handle that situation yourself, I'll take care of it, God says. I'll deal with it. And then it's for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. And let that be a warning to any Christian, any person out here that you think that it's okay to be mean to people, that it's okay for you to offend people and not try to work on your words, that it's okay for you to hurt people because God says, vengeance is mine. And I'm around Christians all the time who thinks it's okay to hurt people and think that they don't need to change. Well, this is just the way I am. Vengeance is going to be his. When people hurt you, you don't go try to do anything. You let God take care of it because he goes on and says, On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Yes! They should fire you up. If you're obedient and you do good, even though they don't deserve it, God's going to drop coals on their head. Yes! I'm the only one. (laughs) I feel justified, okay? (laughs) But it says, do not overcome. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's what we're supposed to do. If the prayer team will go ahead and come. And here's why. We're about to get serious. It's one thing to come to church and hear a message. It's another thing to do something about it. Matter of fact, it's really not until you apply God's word in your life Will anything change in your life? That's why many people come to church every day and they leave. They leave the same way they come. It's because they never engage. They never imply what we're learning today. Okay, Pastor B, you got my attention. I know I need to forgive. Where's, what's my first step? Ephesians, it tells us here. It says, get rid of all bitterness, all rage, all anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. I can't do it, God. I can't be kind and compassionate to him. The pain is too real. Yeah, that's why you need the help of Jesus. And then he says, forgiving. There we go, there's that word. Forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, forgave you. 
what we're talking about today, you can't do unless by the power of God. You can't do it on your own ability. And here in a second, we're going to worship a little bit. And then I want to pray for some people. I want to pray for those who, who again, like I said, maybe, maybe you can't forgive because you've never received true forgiveness from your heavenly Father. And then for those of you who are struggling with some forgiveness, I'm going to lead you in an inner healing prayer. And I'm going to believe that today that some bondages are going to be broken in your life. Can I get an amen? Some chains are going to be broken in your life. Again, it's not, again, remember, it's all those things. It's not that we're minimizing. It's not that we're forgetting. It's not that we're just saying, okay, I'm reconciled. It's none of that stuff. It's saying today, I'm done letting what you did to me affect me in my life. I'm going to release you today or release them, and I'm going to go on and live my life and do what God has called me to do. If you'll go ahead and stand with me. And at any time, if you need prayer, maybe you just need somebody to hug you. Maybe the pain is so real, you just need somebody to love you. Maybe you want somebody to pray with you to help give you strength. But man, we're going to just make self that we're available. And we're going to get our heart and our attitude right and let the Holy Spirit do what only the Holy Spirit can do in our life. Let's worship.